At the end of solo leveling, Sung Jin Woo hit a level of power that was completely broken. He became a god. Like, I'm not joking, he can't even age anymore. And his powers are so busted that his mere presence started to affect the entire world. But how did he grow this powerful? Well, to find that out, we have to rewind all the way back to the beginning of the story. Back when Jin Woo was only rank E. This is the lowest rank a hunter can possibly be. But if that wasn't bad enough, after gaining hope, after almost dying in a double dungeon, that he might have been reawakened, which would mean that his hard work and near-death experiences wasn't for nothing. Spending years as the weakest hunter for his family, he could finally awaken as an absolute be- Oh, it, it, it turns out nothing had changed, as he's confirmed that he's not only E-Class, but he's actually seven times weaker than the average E-Class hunter. This guy was so weak, he should have had his own rank. But yet, yeah, there was a light in the darkness. Jin Wu unlocked an ability that no other hunter had ever seen before. The power to continuously level up. In other manga or manhua, you would look at this and think, so what? I mean, anyone can grow stronger if they train enough, right? Well, no. The power system in solo leveling doesn't work that way. The rank you're born with is the rank you'll stay, unless you get extremely lucky and reawaken. And even then, you'll be stuck at that rank forever as well. You may be able to gain more experience to handle situations better, but in terms of raw power and magical abilities, yeah, no other hunter can increase their power, but Jin Woo can. He's given quests like a video game, and immediately Immediately after realising that he should definitely do them, or he'll likely die, he starts growing progressively stronger, with 5 stats he can upgrade. Number 1, Strength. As you'd expect, this means Jim Woo's raw power. Number 2, Agility. This relates to Jim Woo's speed and flexibility. Number 3, Health. This is also self-explanatory, this relates to Jim Woo's durability and how much damage he can take. Number 4, Perception. This relates to the ability to sense magic and not just that, but danger. And it also allows him to see through an opponent's attack patterns. And number five, intelligence. Now this stat is not what you'd think. It actually relates to his mana. And Jin Wu didn't realize it to begin with, but this is possibly the most important stat of all as it expands his capability to use abilities and more of his shadows. But we'll talk about that more later. When Jin Wu enters his first unique dungeon, he realizes that even though he's changed, he's still quite a lot weaker than the average monsters he sees. But thanks to pushing himself and using a weapon from his inventory, he manages to stand up to them and finally get some meaningful kills. A good way to think about Jin Wu's leveling system is akin to progressive overload in real life. If any of you have ever worked out in the gym, you'd know what this is. It's when you progressively increase weight by small amounts each time you go, which causes an increase in muscle mass and hypertrophy. Jin Wu levels in the same way, but in his case, it's the dungeons that are getting progressively harder, increasing his strength little by little, and him almost dying in these dungeons is akin to pushing to failure in the gym, which increases strength faster than anything, but in Jin Wu's case, it's taken to a completely new level. Now, Jin Wu's ability to just pull out weapons from his inventory is a lot more impressive than you'd think, because as seen later by A-Rank Hunters, it's actually an unprecedented use of spatial magic. Another reason Jin Wu is able to push himself so far against foes that are stronger than him is because of the double dungeon. Unlike Ju He, who was traumatized to the point of shivering whenever in combat, it makes Jin Wu completely fearless in front of anything. Jin Wu progressively gets stronger as he makes his way through this instant dungeon, shown by the wolves names turning from orange to grey. Because of this, Jin Woo is feeling confident as he finally finds the boss room. He feels the intensity since he's increased his perception stat, knowing that this is a true beast, and that he could very likely die here if he's not careful. And yet, he chooses to fight. This boss is absolutely terrifying, with a title highlighted orange, and it destroys Jin Woo immediately. Nothing Jin Woo does seems to work because of the snake's thick scales, and he could die in a single hit. But then, he decides to throw away his broken sword and demolish the snake with his bare hands like a chad. This was Jim Wu's first huge victory as it's when he realises that he actually enjoys fighting and getting stronger. After leaving the dungeon, he deals a crucial blow against a D-ranked boss, saying that it was a level below Kasaka, meaning that the boss he just fought in the E-ranked dungeon was far stronger than it should have been. Jim Wu continues to train after returning to the hospital, shocking a nurse with his... um... Uh...
Wait, what was I talking about? So yeah, apparently Jim Woo has a hidden Riz stat, as he doesn't even have to say anything to get girls' numbers now. But in all seriousness, Jim Woo's leveling system actually does make him appear more attractive, as the more he levels up, the less blemishes he has, and the more his body moulds into being a vessel. A vessel for what? Well, I'll talk about that later. So he not only grows in muscle, but he gets every short guy's dream, as he can also increase his height as well. Jim Woo decides to join a strike squad soon after to conquer a C-ranked dungeon, but it turns out that some of the hunters is in there, betray him and leave him with the boss to die. Jim Woo could already sense that something was off, showing that his perception skill has made his senses akin to Spider-Man at this point. Jin Woo rarely struggles in this battle, but thanks to a use of status recovery, he wins the battle. So yeah, this is an important time to bring up what status recovery is, as it's completely ridiculous, as it literally heals Jin Woo's entire body, no matter how injured he is. Jin Woo may have struggled a lot in this battle, but he still managed to kill a C-ranked dungeon boss all on his own. Now you could say, but Hoppo, he had to rely on status recovery. And that's true, but after defeating the boss, he gained experience which catapulted his strength a lot further. This makes it the perfect time for Jim Woo to annihilate the bastards who just tried to kill him. They all think that defeating the boss was impossible for any of them. So when Jim Woo comes out, they're shocked to say the least. Kwang Dong Suk was the leader of this group and he was rank C. But when they try and kill Jim Woo, they realize something is up and Jim Woo is forced by by the system to kill them all. These kills were the first of Jim Woo's life. He's killed many monsters, but these were human, and yet he barely bats an eye as he sees them as the same as the beast he's been fighting. This causes Jim Woo to be a lot less hesitant in the future and less naive in general, which contributes to his unrelenting strength as he adopts the mindset that only the strong can survive in this world. Jin Woo kills all eight of these hunters with relative ease, but Huang Dong Suk has a younger brother who is actually S rank, which causes a lot more trouble in the future. But on a slightly more optimistic note, Jim Woo gains a new skill called Bloodlust, which does exactly what you'd expect and comes in clutch later on. Before that, Jim Woo decides to enter an s rank dungeon. Needless to say, this was on an entirely different level than any dungeon he'd ever entered before. But this only made Jin Woo more motivated to survive, as if he did, he'd come out many times stronger. Jin Woo fights the guard dog Cerberus, whom has a red name, making Jin Woo way weaker than him. And even with his title buffs and speed skill, he still doesn't stand a chance. To make things even worse, it buffs itself to become twice as strong, and Jin Woo can't do anything to it. But you need to remember, he is a shonen protagonist after all. So through another clever use of status recovery, plus using the same strat he used against the Akashic Snake to be an absolute chad and use his bare hands, he catches the beast off guard, and somehow manages to win the battle. This is insane! I mean, this is a guard dog to an S-ranked dungeon, but through sheer determination, Determination, Jim Woo managed to overcome the gap. Jim Woo levels up multiple times from this, but realizes that he'll die for certain if he enters the dungeon now, swearing to return later. So he decides to enter another attack party with some old friends for a raid. But it turns out that a man named Kang Tai Shik was hired to kill some professional prisoners he was in charge of. But it turns out he actually enjoys killing any humans, so Jin Woo and his party are put in immediate danger. Kang was a B rank assassin type hunter, and his skill slash experience really shows here. Song was the first to fight Kang and he didn't know that Jin Woo had grown so much. But despite getting a buff from Ju He, increasing all of his stats, he still can't stand up to Kang. An important thing to mention is that despite Song being a C-rank hunter, he had swordsmanship more advanced than possibly anyone, as it was shown later that he actually trains the future waifu herself, S-rank Cha Hain, who's known for her swordsmanship, so he's a lot stronger than his rank appears because of his techniques. But even then he couldn't overcome the gap, so Jin Woo steps in. His friends soon find out that he's been reawakened, and the bloody battle commences. Kang appreciates Jim Woo's talent as he says that he was not paid near enough to deal with him. Jim Woo also gets a boost from Ju He, but it's still an equal fight, and Kang eventually gets the upper hand with his stealth skill, slicing and dicing Jin Woo. But Jin Woo once again uses status recovery, shocking everyone as a combatant type hunter with healing skills is completely unprecedented. A big reason Jin Woo was losing was because of the hesitation he had, but he realized realizes that he shouldn't be wasting emotions on trash like Kang, and goes on the attack with the intention to kill, and Kang is completely outmatched. I also believe this is because of his perception skill, and after receiving enough of his attacks, he eventually acclimated to him. Jin Woo uses his new skill, Bloodlust, to freeze Kang in place and stab him through the chest, ending the battle. This shows Kang the level Jin Woo can reach as he's killed, saying that his shadow has merged with the darkness, and he'll become as strong 
thing as darkness itself. As a bonus, Jim Woo gains Kang's skill from killing him, showing that Jim Woo can literally never stop gaining skills, and will eventually have an endless arsenal. Using his new powers from defeating Kang and leveling up, he easily kills the boss and moves on from his friends as they are in completely different leagues now. After this, Jim Woo continues his pursuit to get stronger and gains more skills after this from clearing dungeons, unlocking a new job change quest. And as you guys know if you've read the series, this is what changes Jin Woo forever. Jin Woo was transported into another instant dungeon, and there was only one enemy standing before him, guarding an empty throne, and I'll tell you now, he is an absolute badass. His name is Eagles. By far the most powerful enemy Jin Woo has faced since the double dungeon, and he stood zero chance, until Eagles got too cocky and started using his bare hands, which was a huge mistake, as Jin Woo manages to block one fatal attack and finally kills Egress. And by the way, I can't go over enough how much Jim Wu was outmatched here. I mean, Egress had a dark red name, but from defeating him, he grew more than ever before because he not only leveled up, but he got an S class item, which made him much stronger. I mean, to put this into comparison, when Jim Wu completes a quest, he typically gets an upgrade of five in his stats. But from getting this helmet, he was able to get 20 stamina and 20 strength and 15% damage reduction. So yeah, items and soul leveling are actually really important. They are invisible and they can't be seen when Jim Woo wears them, but they are extremely important to his growth, as he doesn't only grow in levels, but through items. So the quest is over. Of course it couldn't be that easy. The dungeon starts spawning an infinite amount of enemies, and Jin Woo is exhausted from the Egress fight, so it's unwinnable. But thanks to his shonen protagonist's powers, his luck kicks in, and he's teleported to his penalty quest since he never did the daily tally. Whilst in the penalty area, Jin Woo shows how much he's grown from when he was first sent there. Back then, he had to just run through his life, but here, he sees it as an opportunity to train and get even stronger. He levels up multiple times, and he actually buys a weapon from the item store, giving him a 25% increase in damage. And it's also here where he learns Dominator's Touch, which allows him to control objects without even touching them. And later we'll see how important this skill actually is. So, a new man, he returns to the quest. Through some truly ingenious moves, he manages to work out the gimmick and actually completes the dungeon and gets his official title, Necromancer. This gives Jim Woo the ability to call forth spirits that are already dead. Jim Woo accepts this role, but thanks to his experience, he instantly levels up to being known as the Monarch of Shadows. And we all know where this leads. Jin Woo uses Arise for the first time. This shit is so hype. And despite the skill at this point being limited, he still manages to awaken Egress has his knight, giving Jin Wu a humongous power increase, as he states later that he wouldn't have stood a chance against Egress if he used his sword. Jin Wu exits the dungeon confidently, moving on to clearing more gates as usual, but it turns out that the next gate he goes into is a red gate. This one specifically is an a rank gate filled with ice elves and ice bears. As soon as everyone enters the dungeon, Jim Wu shows how built different he is, as the aura he emanates is stronger than an a rank hunter, which this scale senses and chooses to go with him, acknowledging that Jin Wu may be above a rank. And to prove this point, he further shows his power by shocking everyone, killing an ice bear in one punch! <laughs> Okay, in all seriousness, Jim Wu carried his low rank team here and shows his intelligence in battle, which is a huge factor to his strength. And not just that, but he has further increased his shadow army. And alongside Egress, whom Jin Wu states is actually stronger than he is, his forces are insanely powerful now, especially after turning the ice bears that he defeats into his shadows. When in a fight with the leader of the ice elves and his forces, Jin Wu further shows his intellect, as he manages to trick the A rank Kim Trull, who are abandoned Jim Woo and some others earlier as dead weight, which turned out to be an awful decision as because of this his entire team was wiped out, and he was actually used as a bait by the ice elves to lead them to Jim Woo. Jim Woo fights these powerful monsters completely on his own, you know, it's called solo leveling for a reason, and whilst doing so, he kills Kim Truel with no hesitation, and all of this was a part of Jim Woo's plan. He foresaw Kim Truel attacking him from the very beginning, and he uses it to his advantage, and once he 
realizes that the elf leader is too strong for even both he and Egress, Jim Wu arises Kim Chul as his shadow, as he steals a Tadori's move and ganks the leader. Jin Wu pretty much cleared this entire dungeon on his own, which is outrageous. I mean, this is an A rank dungeon, and Jin Wu is nowhere close to his full potential. After leaving the gate, he's confronted by Bear Hyun Hu, trying to intimidate Jin Wu into telling him what happened. But Jin Wu is having none of it, brushing off this S rank hunter like he's nothing. At this point, Jin Wu realizes that he's only just S rank after meeting Bake, so he decides that this is the time to enter the S rank dungeon of the Demon King's castle. There are 100 floors in this dungeon, and Jim Wu begins to speedrun it with relative ease. He only gets into trouble when he finds the boss of the lower floors, Vulcan, and knows that he has to take him on by himself or his shadows would just be annihilated. This battle was extremely dangerous, and if not for Iron, Jim Wu would have died right here. But again, his intellect is what carries him and wins him the battle through his clever tactics, as he baits Vulcan and drops a building on top of him. Yeah, that'd do it. Now in this video, I haven't really went over Jim Wu's skills too much, like his ability to increase his speed by 30%, for example. But after this battle, he gets a special orb that can double any magical attack, which is completely insane. So I feel like I have to bring that up. After this though, the speedrun continues as not even bosses can do anything to Jim Wu anymore. This is when he decides to take a break and goes to get re-evaluated. This is actually a huge move. As before this, Jim Wu knew he didn't have the power to oppose every S rank like Berk and Huang Dong Su. But now he feels like he'll have no issue officially becoming an S rank as his power becomes unreadable. Jim Wu's power at this point has hit the same level of the chairman and manages to make his heart quiver from his desire to keep growing and entering dungeons. Jin Wu decides to see what the other S ranks are made of shortly after this by disguising himself and rising up Cha He In in the process. He enters a dungeon with an attack group and it all goes horribly wrong as they start being completely destroyed by High Orcs and Jin Wu has to step in and clear the dungeon on his own. This dungeon was of the highest level of A rank that made other A ranks like Wu Jin Chul shiver from the pressure and it's stated that it'd be difficult for even two S ranks to conquer it but Jin Wu don't need no help as he summons his shadows and doubles their strength using a buff and goes on to fight the boss himself, emulating Cha Hain in the process. Jim Wu starts to enjoy himself more and more and resurrects the boss's own forces against them. In fact, Jim Wu got so into the fight that he wasn't paying attention to his surroundings and Cha Hain sees him clearing it on his own and straight up resurrecting the dead. All of this obviously rizzed up Cha Hain even further, but an important thing to mention is that Jim Wu clearing this dungeon was seen as a feat surpassing S rank. As most of the S ranks couldn't dream of clearing an A rank dungeon all on their own. And even the S rank Choi Jong In, known as the ultimate soldier, admits that such a feat would be impossible for him. And Jin Wu is finally introduced to the world as Korea's 10th S rank hunter. After being introduced on the news and being swarmed by reporters, Jin Wu is so fast that he teleports beyond them, terrifying Berk as he realizes that Jin Wu isn't an ordinary hunter and he's actually continuously growing as he's now completely out of his league. Not just that, but when he moves, he can't even track him anymore with his beast vision. This makes him realize that Jim Wu needs no help and he can just create the world's strongest guild all on his own. So after this, Jim Wu immediately returns to the demon castle and meets Isil, a demon baddie who guides him to Baran, the demon king and the former monarch of white flames. So needless to say, he was a challenge. Jim Wu barely manages here as he has to use all of his summons to their full effect and he still couldn't beat this monster without the help of Isil, giving Jin Wu the opportunity to use Dominator's Touch to punch his head off like damn. So this is technically the first monarch Jin Wu has defeated, but not the last. And remember earlier when I brought up items? Jin Wu actually obtained the Demon Monarch's ring. And with this ring, he unlocked all of the set's effects. The first set effect being a plus five in all stats, which we already explained earlier as being busted, but the set effect two is actually plus 10. And that's ignoring the effects that the individual items give him. I mean, the ring on its own gives him a plus 20 in sense and a plus 20 in intelligence. Like it's actually insane how much this boosts him. And in case that wasn't enough, the system was like, well, he needs to be even stronger. So they gave him a bonus stat of plus 30. 
city. So from just defeating Buran, he's became exponentially more powerful. He also turned a badass dragon into a summon from this, so win-win. After defeating Buran, Jim Wu leveled up to be much more of a monster, as he was already easily S-ranked before, and now he's close to a national hunter's power, making Jim Wu one of the strongest people in the world. So needless to say, when one of the most dangerous raids on Jeju Island was finally being planned, Korea and Japan's s rank hunters stand off against each other to test their abilities with Jim Wu watching on. This was because he only just became an s rank but this right here already cements how far above them all he actually is. Got over Yuji, the strongest s rank hunter in the room by far, saw Jim Wu as something special, challenging him to a battle once he saw Jim Wu easily stop Kumamoto, who was stated to be able to take care of B-class dungeons completely solo. Jim Wu never takes this fight seriously against Goto, as he not only didn't summon any of his shadows, but he spent his time mocking his attacks, dodging them all with ease while smiling at him, causing Goto to lose it and try to kill Jin Wu. Not that it matters, as Jin Wu toys over me for more, catching his hand instead of his wrist to make sure the battle doesn't end. As they dash towards each other and Jin Wu finally becomes somewhat serious, they have to be stopped by other S ranks, and Goto finally realising what he was fighting against, as he instinctively sensed his own death. Shortly after this whole debacle, Jin Wu actually decides not to join the raid, as he saw Goto and the other S ranks as being capable of dealing with it. But yeah, he couldn't have been more wrong, as they were all annihilated by one ant. This was the Merriam of solo leveling, who destroyed everyone with ease, including Goto, who he killed instantly. Jim Wu finally appears on the battlefield like a straight badass, and his presence is enough for Bayek to know that they will all be safe now. The black ant appears, and Jim Wu isn't even remotely concerned. And when they begin to fight, yeah, we can see why. He deliberately takes the ant's first huge blow, and this is when we all knew he f***ed up. Using Dominator's touch, he destroys the ant with his raw power, and the ant realises that he doesn't stand a chance if the fight keeps going like this. The ant uses poison sneakily, which has no effect, and chooses to rely on his most powerful ability, his speed. But again, he's humbled instantly, as Jin Wu completely outmatches him, as remember that Jin Wu can boost his speed by 30% whenever he wants. Even when the ant uses numbers, it doesn't matter as Jin Wu uses his shadows to deal with with the army of ants, and finally kills him using his unique skill, Mutilate. This feat is insane, as Jim Wu admits that this ant was stronger than Buran, and we all know how much he struggled in that fight. And yet, in this short amount of time, he's grown to this ridiculous level, and unlike Buran, he's actually able to resurrect this ant as his summon. This gives him a shadow that surpasses s rank hunters like Cha Hain, as shown later on when Beru fights here and holds back most of his strength, and she still can't stand a chance. Jim Jim Wu's shadow army at this point is insanely strong and surpasses pretty much every guild. I haven't brought this up, but Jim Wu's shadows can endlessly regenerate as long as he has mana. So along with Egress and Iron, who've also grown to the power of an s rank hunter, Jin Wu is built different. Previously in the raid, Jin Wu healed all of the hunters, but could not heal his future wife, Cha Hain, as she is too injured for his potions. So he resurrects a healing hunter who died in the battle, revealing his ability to the hunters, and forced the live stream to be cut as he knows that this power would shake the world. And after cleaning up all the remaining ants on Jeju Island, Jin Wu hits level 100. Because of his achievements, Jin Wu is more on the spotlight than ever, so he's offered to go see Norma Selna, who has awakened national hunters to hit their full potential, but recognises that Jin Wu is a king far beyond any of them, as he does not have a limit. Jin Wu at this point in the story has seemingly no one to challenge him, and meanwhile saving his sister and showing how ruthless he is, he left Beru to deal with a dungeon all on his own, causing people to realise that Jin Wu's guild, with just half of his summons, surpass any other guild in the country. Jin Wu then finally returns to where it all began, the double dungeon. This is where he meets the architect, who created the entire levelling system. Now, I'm not going to dissect all of this here because this video is already long enough, but before he entered the dungeon, he reached level 101, and a lot of his skills has increased. Despite Despite this, the architect limited his abilities to use shadows, wanted to test Jim Wu's individual talent. Jim Wu shows skill that has actually surpassed the architect's expectations, as he starts to gain the upper hand, and after a huge battle, Jin Wu wins the battle against the architect. 
This, in my opinion, was the biggest moment in Jim Woo's entire story, as it's a direct correlation to his first time in a double dungeon. He was literally begging for his life, using all of his intelligence just to stay alive, and he still lost. But here, he knows it was all a game, and has confidence exuding the entire time, not once feeling like he'd lose. Once he's given some of the previous Shadow Monarch's memories, he awakens to a brand new power, gaining a boost of 100,000 mana. I mean, needless to say, this is a huge upgrade. His mana has been increased over 10 times its usual level, which was 9,433. And because of this, his army can now be increased to insane levels. Once he exits the previous Shadow Monarch's memories, he saves the S-Class Bozos, who couldn't do anything against the Architect. Okay, maybe that's a bit harsh, but still. Jim Wu goes on to crush the Architect and devours the system. This makes Jim Wu the master of his own power for the first time, as he exits the dungeon victorious. After this, the Monarchs finally decide to make their move, as a humongous gate opens in Japan. The national ranked hunter Yuri Orlov, who specializes in barrier magic, is killed while trying to hold back this gate as giants enter Japan, making this the most dangerous gate Jin Wu has ever heard of. Jin Wu arrives and starts annihilating the giants with his shadow army, whereas the other S-class hunters in the area can't even move because they're so exhausted. They're literally just left to finish off the giants that Jin Wu's summons have weakened. That's how far below the S rank is now to Jin Wu. Anyway, Jin Wu sent his soldiers all over the entire country of Japan, and using his new mana reserves, he knows that no one can stand a chance against him in a drawn out battle. All is going well until he meets the leader of these giants, which finally gives Jin Wu a true challenge for the first time in a long while. Its power is nauseating, and because of its power, Jin Wu wants to wipe it out of existence entirely. Fully making use of his new mana level, he uses his summons to try and find a weakness in the giant's defences, and notice that its eye is a major weak point. Jin Wu is stated to be a complete monster in this battle, as alongside Beru, he finally wins the battle. Oh god, not again. Turns out this was just a warm up. Despite leveling up multiple times, which at this point is crazy, as remember it's harder for Jim Wu to level the more he ranks up, as the experience required is much higher, and yet the gate does not close. So the quest is not over yet either. This gate sucks up the giant's tremendous mana and manages to cut Jim Wu despite not even entering it. But he steadies himself and enters this dungeon. But it turns out that it's completely empty. But he hears a creepy laugh, and once he approaches this being, it turns out to be another monarch, the monarch of beginning, Legia, who was sealed after his loss to the rulers. After offering to join Jin Wu, he begins to cut the monarch free before realising that he actually isn't on humanity's side, so Jin Wu decides to kill him before he can cause any more issues. This gives Jin Wu such a huge power boost that the experience can't even be measured by the system, taking time to calculate, and Jin Wu leaves knowing that this is only the beginning of something much larger, as he's confirmed to be level 100 and 22. While all this is going on, Norma Selner has realised that the Monarchs may be targeting national hunters, and visits Christopher Reed, telling him that he needs to be protected and the only person capable of doing so is Sung Jin Woo, confirming that the entire ranking system, including national rank, is no longer enough to measure his immense power. Remember at the beginning of the video when I said that Jin Woo was 7 times weaker than E rank and he needed his own rank? Well, that's the case now, but in an entirely opposite direction. Direction. Thomas Andre, the strongest hunter alive, has been showing interest in Jin Wu, but warns Huang Dong Su to stay the hell away from him, because if he doesn't, he'll die. But Dong Su had a different plan. He chooses to kidnap and almost kill Jin Wu's best friend, Jin Ho, and tries to pit Thomas Andre against him, since he knows that, yeah, if he was to face Jin Wu, he'd die instantly. This plan works as when Jin Wu arrives to save his friend and is about to in Dong Su, Thomas comes to his rescue, ordering Jin Wu to stop, but at this point, Jin Wu doesn't give a sh who's talking to him, and immediately goes on the offensive. This damages Thomas Andre's pride, as he chooses to kill Jin Wu. But how does Jin Wu respond? Yeah, what a chad. The battle begins, and despite Jin Wu giving Thomas some credit, saying that he's extremely strong, he still never seems like he's in any danger. Even when Thomas uses his reinforcement spell, which later on impresses the monarchs, Jin Wu was never not in control. Thomas uses a power that Jin Wu equates to a black hole, causing Jin Wu to stop holding back against them as much as he was, using pure strength to destroy Thomas in a clash. And this was Thomas's forte. Jin Wu beats him into a 
bloody pulp, breaking every bone in his body. And no, that's not an exaggeration, it's literally stated. Not just that, but he managed to kill Huang Dong Su whilst he was fighting Thomas, proving how much stronger he is. This incident causes everyone to know that Sung Jin Woo is the strongest hunter in the world. A major turning point takes place soon after, as the Monarch of Frost attacks the chairman. Jin Woo arrives to try and save the chairman, fighting off the Frost Monarch, but this makes him fully aware that Jin Woo was more of a threat than any of the fragments of Luminosity, asking the other monarchs for help. They are like, hell nah, knowing that Ashbourne is way too strong. But once he explains that the Shadow Monarch is residing in a human body, two other monarchs decide to join him planning to kill Jin Wu. This includes the Monarch of Plagues and the Beast Monarch. When they do attack, it takes all of them to stand up to Jin Wu. And remember that these guys are like actual gods in this world. Thomas Andre couldn't do anything against the Beast Monarch, and yet Jin Wu manages against three of them, stating that even if he dies here, he'll at least kill one of them. This again shows how far he's come. I mean, look at when he first died in the Double Dungeon. He was unaccepting of it, screaming for his life, but here, he accepts his death death like a giga chad and not only that he lives up to his promise as he manages to kill the monarch of plagues before finally receiving a fist through the chest from the beast monarch yet this was the worst decision they've ever made. That's right, killing Jin Wu actually made them way stronger. Because the way to access the Shadow Monarch's power is to, well, die, as Ashbourne did in the past, and use the power of Arise on yourself. This is when Jin Wu finally awakens as the true Shadow Monarch. And the other two monarchs realize they f up. This is an important time to mention that the reason Ashbourne is so strong is because he was the number one subordinate to the absolute being, aka God, becoming the sole emissary. So when he was killed in the war, he awakened to the power the absolute being placed within him, the power of death. And now Jin Wu has awoken this power as well. He's actually told that he'll never age again and he'll live an imperishable life, which is already a godlike ability. Once he awakened, the beast monarch runs away like a little bitch, but Jin Wu doesn't allow it. He covers the entire planet with his magic to sense the monarch, meaning that Jin Wu, if he wanted to, could likely destroy the surface of the world if he wanted to. Since this seemingly took nothing out of him, as once he arrives, he kills the beast with four attacks. Even Jin Wu's shadows have leveled up immensely, as both Beru and Igra stand up to the Frost Monarch, who shits himself when Jin Wu returns, announcing that he's killed the Beast Monarch. The Frost Monarch lasts even less time, as he dies immediately and Jin Wu tells the world that this is a message to any remaining monarchs. So Jin Wu, after this battle, approaches the colossal gate that opened, one much bigger than the one even Kamish came out of. And the seven star Lu Zhejiang states that if every hunter in the world gathered, they could still be sucked into the gate and killed. Jin Wu naturally assumed that this was a gate relating to the monarchs, but it was actually the previous shadow army left to him by Ashbourne. Hundreds of thousands of shadows come out, bowing to Jin Wu. Adding this on top of the army he's already built, he now has forces that surpasses Ashbourne's. This army is completely insane, as Thomas Andre states that one of the three dragons could threaten all of humanity. And that's not even taken into consideration Belion, who is possibly the strongest shadow ever, because when Beru challenges him, who at this point along with Egress was Jin Wu's strongest shadow, he's clearly outmatched. And Beru was already stated to be a god of destruction. All of this finally gains the King of Dragons' attention, Hantarus, the strongest monarch to finally go after Jim Wu. This causes Jim Wu to tell everyone to run like rabbits instead of fighting, but he's tricked when Antares uses the gates as a bluff and appears in only one location. Antares kills millions of people and it's all left on Jin Wu's mind as he was just outplayed and the lives lost were his fault. And we also learned that Antares' army is 10 million strong and he has the remaining monarchs on his side, meaning that Jin Wu has 10 times less soldiers, so he devises a plan. He begins to wipe out small portions of Antares' army, adding them to his own as shadows. And once doing this thousands of times, Antares finally catches up to him, confronting Jin Wu. And their epic battle finally begins. Jin Wu wins the first round as he tricks Antares into summoning a significant portion of his army, using Dragon Roar, the skill he gained 
from Kamish's runestone. He immobilizes them all, including the remaining monarch, Yugamont. Jinwu drags Antares into an area where it becomes a straight up battle to the death. It takes everything Jinwu has to fight Antares. All of his summons can't do anything, but yet Jinwu doesn't back down, telling him to f off when he offers his hand. Antares' entire body is pretty much impenetrable and feels like hot magma on the surface. And even Jin Wu, who'd become immortal at this point, wouldn't stand a chance if he was hit head on by one of his attacks. This is where Jin Wu completely utilizes his full power along with the power Ashborn left him, cloaking his entire body in an armor of shadows to face Antares as an equal once and for all. But despite this, Jin Wu still can't win. They fight at full strength for a long time, but he can't sustain his form. But then, the rulers appear. It turns out that Jinwoo never expected to win, planning to use their powers to distort space. And through the vessels of the rulers, he brought them to Earth. So, despite losing the battle, he won the war. Jinwoo still doesn't accept this result though, as remember that millions of people died, and he wants to bring them back. So he uses the Cup of Reincarnation to rewind back 10 years, and also request the rulers to not send anyone to Earth, to avoid anyone awakening magical powers. For everyone to live in peace, he chooses to go into the Dimensional Gap and fight all of the Monarchs again, including Antares on his own without anyone ever knowing his achievements. Jin Wu spends 27 years fighting, winning his battles and approaches Antares once more. Jin Wu has grown insanely strong. As before, he was outmatched completely, but here, he wins the battle and returns to Earth without a scratch. The rulers thank Jin Wu, but tell him that his powers are way too strong to be on Earth. I mean, we learn later that this is definitely the case, but when Jin Wu threatens him, the guy immediately backs off, which is something the rulers have never done before. This makes Jin Wu the most powerful person alive, to the point where even the brightest fragment of light, essentially a god, is scared of challenging his authority. As remember that Jin Wu now has the powers of every monarch combined into one. And not just that, he has all of their forces, and Antares alone had 10 million soldiers. So... Yeah, probably not a good idea to antagonize this guy. This is where Jin Wu's power reaches its end point. But as we see in the epilogue, there is a lot more feats that prove how strong he is. But I'm going to end this video here, as this is where Jin Wu's power came to its end. So yeah, this is one of my favorite videos to do. So if you want to see more solo leveling and more videos in the future, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you guys next time.